Ida Clawthorne is a badass. She starts off the show styled the most powerful witch on the Boiling Isles, is a wanted felon and only gets cooler from there, adopting ancient styles of magic, gaining the ability to transform into a harpy version of herself and flying around in open defiance of a genocidal emperor and kicking unreal amounts of coven ass while she does it. She is also a big, fat softy. Even from her earliest appearance, Ida can be relied upon to actively prioritize the safety and health of children and animals, even when it comes inconveniently to her, such as when she adopted King against her better judgment. She took on Luce with only the flimsiest of lies that preserved her impression of a remote and scary witch despite her actual motivation being that Luz was in fact a lost kid. And even when confronted with a child who has actually fought her and for all intents and purposes belongs to her greatest enemy, when it became clear that his life was in imminent danger all grudges or even considerations for that enmity are dropped in favor of extending a hand in an attempt to comfort and protect. Which is why if I had to be on somebody's bad side, I'd rather mess with Ida than Rain Whispers. Rain is indisputably a heroic character, but not an uncomplicated one. Rain is shown to be charming, affable, and with relatable, ironic stage fright despite being a bard. Because they're introduced as someone that Ida is close to, we already have a sense that they're alright, as Ida doesn't give real assholes the time of day except to inconvenience them somehow. Rain is shown to be collaborative and gracious, someone who abjures the spotlight in favor of making sure credit is given where credit is due, even when it comes to attributing the inspiration to fight Bellus's regime to Ida. We also can't help but like them because Rain Rain was a daring person even as a child. They had a keen awareness of systems and enough emotional and intellectual ability to sidestep the worst of those systems' effects on their own person. They even show the wisdom to share this knowledge very judiciously. So this clever saboteur grew up into a clever and powerful saboteur. How is this different from Ida, you ask? All of it is in the execution. Ida might be a badass, but Rain Whispers is a terrifying badass who is capable of going some very gray places in favor of the greater good. Rain entered into a corrupt system with the hope that they could change it from the inside. As well-meaning as their intent was, they quickly realized that this was impossible. The only way to really change things was to destroy it at its source, and that's what set them on the path of organizing an actual resistance against a very evil regime. I want to stress how brave this was. Ida's bravery shows itself in her open defiance. She had the distance and the support system for much of the story to engage in flagrant disrespect of Bellos and his laws. With Rain, however, their bravery shines through in the fact that they were actively subverting Bellos right under his nose for an indeterminate period of time, in a famously paranoid coven where the premier officers are both absolutely desperate and highly invested in sniffing out any rebellion. And when it comes to rebellion, Bellos plays for keeps. At this stage, the vast majority of Bellos' arm is shown in imprisoning people and taking palismen, but much of the power of a very evil regime isn't in what's publicly described, and lies instead with what's commonly whispered or implied. Disappearing people and doing unspeakable things to them in dark dungeons, summary executions, and so forth. Rain operated knowing the risks. It's the bravery of any resistance fighter. Now, that bravery doesn't necessarily make someone scarier, but it's in highlighting the stakes of Rain's fight that draws attention to the super power that does make Rain genuinely scary, and that's their ability to sacrifice. The ability to sacrifice is a double-edged sword, and there are many pieces of media that do address this particular thing in more detail. Disney's Andor, for example, features the character Luthen, also known as Axis, who is the middleman connecting the scattered cells of the rebellion across the empire. This comes at an incredible personal cost. The fact that the regime is wide-reaching and bottomless in its evil, and the reality that the rebellion more or less depends on him means that any mistake on Luthen's part brings the entire thing crashing down. By necessity, Luthen cannot have a relationship with anyone, or indeed have anything to lose that would make him vulnerable. So he's had to sacrifice everything in order to preserve this rebellion. The cost is not just personal though, it's moral, and the show draws attention to it by often choosing shots that frame Luthen like a Sith. He's had to compromise not only his ability to enjoy life in any capacity, he's also had to sacrifice the goodness and ideals that he's fighting to preserve for other people, which is the big complication for Rebellion. I bring this up because Rain is in a very similar position. Rain is a coven head, and as such has their quarters at the Emperor's castle. This gives them privileged access and insider information that was previously inaccessible, but the rank came at a price. None of the Emperor's coven have 
Palisman. None of the coven heads are shown to have Palisman, except Lilith. And knowing what we know about how Bellos harvests them, we know that there may have been a moment where Rain had to give theirs up, sacrificing their familiar for the cause, while knowing exactly what fate they were sending them to. We also know that Rain is intelligent and observant, capable of picking up on small details and ticks in order to maximize their effectiveness, which means there is absolutely no way in hell that Rain, upon getting access to the Emperor's castle and its internal bureaucracy, didn't notice what was happening with Hunter. This is one of those things that would make Ida a horrendous double agent. She sees injustice either towards herself or another person and generally has to get in the middle of it. Her moral compass won't allow for anything else. Rain, however, had to look at that deduce what was going on, and then make the choice to turn a blind eye like the rest of the coven heads. Rain didn't compromise the mission. The best Rain could do within the constraints of their operational parameters was to be slightly less of a dick than the others, but it certainly could not have passed for kindness. Like any undercover operative, Rain was forced into a position where they had to choose the good of the mission and ignore what at the time, in terms of the calculus of rebellion, was the lesser evil. That's a brutal thing to be able to do, and continues to prove that Rain for all their warmth and kindness is also a stone cold bastard. I should also clarify that I am saying this without judgment. I am a great fan of Rain Whispers and understand why they made the choices they made. The point I'm making here is that it was a monumental sacrifice of the self and there really isn't that much more they could have realistically done for Hunter. Too much visible kindness or disclosure of anything rebellion related would have put Hunter in a position where he absolutely 100% would have betrayed it, either on purpose or by the simple fact that the kid cannot tell a lie or guard his expression to save his life. This would have been a disaster for the resistance and best case scenario would have gotten Rain, Darius, and Eber run out of the castle. Worst case scenario, I think you all get the idea. So now we know that Rain is capable of not only potentially sacrificing their palisman, but also great portions of their own morals in favor of their mission's objective. But they are also brave and committed enough to sacrifice their own heart. Which brings us to the saddest and genuinely most impressive aspect of this grim superpower of Rain's. Rain doesn't hesitate, not even for love. Generally speaking, it's much easier for heroic characters to offer up their own lives, bodies, or pride rather than asking it of anyone else. We see this with Ida, the entire Hex Squad, and King at some point. The motive here? To protect others. However, Rain has the capacity to give up that impulse in order to ask the person they love to sacrifice their life, body, or pride. Not once, but twice. In Ida's Requiem, Rain connects with Ida after a very long and painful absence post breakup. Rain not only noticed Ida's curse, but observed enough of its nature that they realized that it could be useful in the fight against the Emperor. Indeed, Rain eventually ends up committing to a sacrifice play, knowing that the Emperor needs all of the Coven Heads for the Day of Unity, and taking down Darius, Everwolf, and themselves would destroy the evil tyrant's plans. The fact that Rain was operating on imperfect information doesn't change the madness of this plan, a plan that was only enabled by the fact that Ida would go down with them. Now it's one thing to talk about how Ida cited the Owl Beast as the thing that alienated her from everyone and made it impossible to get close to anyone. This is true, it's been discussed, it's been explicitly shown, but it's also important to acknowledge that Rain has also been isolated, although Rain's isolation was by choice. Like Luthen, in order to protect the rebellion, Rain had to become somebody with nothing to lose, which was why the sacrifice play was even an option. Because of Ida's deception by omission, they assumed that she remained the same and also lacked those attachments. This misunderstanding being the thing that allowed Rain to ask Ida to go down with them in order to stop the Day of Unity. Ultimately, the realization that Ida did in fact have dependence and had accepted sacrifice as a coping mechanism meant that Rain was able to use the softness and kindness inherent in their heart and tell her to go to her kids, fudging the plan in order to confront Darius and Everwolf alone. Strong as Rain is, it's unlikely that they could have taken both coven heads on their own own if Darius and Eber were in fact in real opposition, and Rain was operating with the understanding that they were going to their death or worse. A similar situation came up on the Day of Unity itself, where Rain had to look Ida in the face and ask her to take their place doing the most dangerous thing in the very rough plan, in addition to asking Ida to take on a moral injury by accepting a sigil on top of everything else. We can see it in Rain's face how much it costs them to ask that. Their regret and the open question if what they're doing is right, but that kind of commitment and determination is only highlighted when they do their best 
best while immobilized with agony to make good on their promise to Luce and protect Ida with their dying breath. That kind of dedication is absolutely terrifying. So if I had to be on the bad side of either of these two, I would definitely not choose Rain Whispers. While they're a hero at heart, they are also a stone cold freedom fighter. They have the finesse and power of a coven head and an implacable focus on their mission that makes them capable of moral sacrifices that even powerful and daring characters like Ida would not be able to follow through on. Rain Whispers would swat this bat if I ever compromised the rebellion and that's for sure. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have a pair of characters from the same media property that you'd like to see analyzed in this way, let us know in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. This is Idol Scree signing off. Whee!